Welcome back to Three Inquisitive Kids. Today's lesson is called the comprehensive application of one variable linear inequalities and linear functions, where we will combine the use of inequalities and linear functions when solving word problems. This is part two of our lesson inequalities in word problems. And as you can see, we are nearing the end of this unit. So this is following up to part one, where we also discussed some of the comprehensive uses of linear functions and inequalities. Here are the learning goals of today. Use the relationship between linear functions, linear inequalities in one variable, and linear equations in one variable to solve word problems. Solve problems swiftly and accurately by using algebra and geometry. So again, this is something that we're really stressing on in this unit, being able to solve problems and look at it from an algebraic point of view and a geometric point of view. These two points of view are interconnected and you could easily shift from one algebraic solution to, to a more leaning geometric method. Anyways, here is our introduction. Let's look at all of these stores. So for example, this says clearance, jump price, 50% discount, $160 off for every $200 spent. So in real life, there are always various promotional activities for the same product. How should we choose to maximize these profits? So what is a way we can promote these products so that we can maximize the most profits? So let's look at example one, and the solution is already here because we want to show you an example of how we can solve problems like this. So the comprehensive application of unary linear inequalities and linear functions. A telecommunication company has two kinds of mobile phone charging services, A and B. The monthly rental fee for service A is $10 and the charge is $0.30 per minute of a call. Service B does not charge the monthly fee, but the charge is $0.40 per minute of a call. When do you think it is more cost effective for customers to choose service A and when to choose service B? So let's first analyze this problem. We're going to read it a couple of times until we have all that essential information. So we know there's two ways that you can choose to be charged. The first way is to first pay an initial fee of $10 and then pay 30 cents per minute of a call. Service B, you don't have to charge a monthly fee, but the rate per minute is slightly higher. Let me circle all of the important numbers here. So initial fee of $10, 0 0.30, 0 0.40. And we're being asked, when do you think it is more cost effective? So how can we make the customer pay as less as possible for this service. So here's our solution. Let's assume that a customer's total call time in a month is X minutes. The total monthly cost of service A is A, and the monthly cost of service B is B. So here, I'm just gonna change this equation into A and this into B. So here we have the quantitative relationships from the problem down. A is equal to 10 plus 0.3x, so we're just describing each of the charging services. And B is equal to 0.4x. When the monthly cost by both services are the same, A is equal to B, substituted, we, since we know that A is equal to 10 plus 0.3x, and B is equal to 0.4x, we can substitute, and then we have the linear equation 10 plus 0.3x is equal to 0.4x. Did you see how in the previous step we used linear functions and then after substituting, we transformed it into a linear equation? Well, after solving this equation, we have x is equal to 100. That is when the monthly cost by both services are the same. But what if the scenario is that the monthly costs are different? Well, there's two scenarios to this. The first one is if A is greater than B. Substituted 10 plus 0.3x is greater than 0.4x. So 
solved, x is less than 100. In this scenario, service B would be more cost effective. And if it was the other way around, A is less than B, substituted 10 plus 0.3x is less than 0.4x, solved x would be greater than 100. So in this scenario, service A would be more cost effective. So do you see how when solving problems like this, it's not one sentence? This entire slide is the answer. You really, When solving problems like this, and when you're talking about inequalities, you have to think about every single possible outcome. So there's three outcomes. If A is equal to B, if A is greater than B, or if A is less than B. You have to really thoroughly discuss each one of these scenarios in order to fully answer the question. Now, some teachers may give you fractions of a point if you only do one or two of the three outcomes, but some other teachers will not give you a point at all because you didn't answer the question fully. So again, it depends on your teacher, how they grade questions like this, but it's just really important to keep in mind that especially when you're working with inequalities and really with any math problem or word problem, and as we move on from this grade level, a lot of the times you will have to think, so this is my first answer, but is there a better answer or a more specific answer? Or maybe I'm not being broad enough. So there's different ways and you have to think of if your answer is the only answer, if it includes every single possible one. It's not just like in elementary school when you would have one plus one, two, and that was the only answer. Now this may have multiple answers or multiple parts to an answer that you have to include. Therefore, when a customer's total monthly time adds up to 100 minutes, both options A and B have the same cost. When it is longer than 100 minutes or more than 100 minutes, A is more cost efficient, and when it is less than 100 minutes, B is more cost efficient. Now here is example two. A unit plans to organize a trip among its employees. The number of people participating in the tour is estimated to be 10 to 25 people, so we're not sure exactly how many people are going. The service quality of the two travel agencies, A and B, is the same, and the price is $200 per person on this trip. But after negotiating, we have two charging plans. So for service A, it says that it can give a 25% discount for each tourist, while service B says one tourist can travel for free while the rest of the tourists each get a 20% discount. So which travel agency would be more cost efficient? Now I want you to pause the video and really think about the steps that we used to solve the previous problem in order to solve this problem. All right, what solution did you use? Did you remember to review your answer at the end? Well, let's find out. Let the number of tourists be X people. So we're setting our variable here. The cost of service A is Y $1, and the cost of service B is Y $2. So now we're just using linear functions to represent, to represent agency A and agency B. So this is for Y1, or for service A. Service A charges 200 times 0.75x, where x is the number of tourists, and $200 is the initial price per person. But since we have a 25% discount, we have to multiply it by 0 0.75. So simplified, y1 is equal to 150x. Now we do the same for service B. Uh, so we have 200 times 0 0.8, since we took in 20% discount for every but one tourist, so times x minus 1. Simplified, y2 is equal to 160x minus 160. Now, this is when we have to think about the different circumstances. When y1 is equal to y2, substituted 150x is equal to 160x minus 160, solved x is equal to 16. So now, this is the step where we include the linear equation. But when y1 is greater than y2, so we substitute, solved x is less than 16, and when y1 is less than y2, x is greater than 16. Since the number of tourists is between 10 to 25 people, 
when x is equal to 16, y1 is equal to y2, because the, the two services are the same. When, six, when x is greater than 16, but less than or equal to 25, y1 is less than y2, and service A would be cheaper. But when x is greater than or equal to 10 and less than 16 people, y1 is greater than y2, which means that service B would be cheaper. Now, before we move on to the summary, I just wanted to kind of conclude the pattern that we see in both of these questions. The questions are all asking us to compare the charging services of two separate plans or the fees of two separate services. And in these, we really have to be really considerate about the initial circumstance, which is if y1 is equal to y2, if one is greater than the other, or one is less than the other. So that's kind of the pattern that we see in these two problems so far. So let's move on to the summary. Which method should you use? Graph each of the scenarios A and B using the variables YA and YB. Then we compare the scenarios A and B. So the first one would be if YA is greater than YB. The second one would be if YA is less than YB. And the third one would be if they are equal to each other. And then we can choose a plan according to the actual word problem. Now we're going to do example three. A school plans to buy several computers, and now it is learned from two stories that the price of each computer of the same model is $6,000, and there is a certain discount for buying more. Store A. The first computer is sold at its full price, while the rest are discounted each by 25%. The relationship with the total cost, Y1, in dollars, and the number of computers, X, would be, and for store B. Each computer is sold with a 20% discount. The relationship with the total cost, Y2, in dollars, and the number of computers, X, is. It tells you store A and store B and which one would be more cost efficient. But this is kind of making it clearer for you as each of these smaller questions kind of leads you and guides you step by step. So what we're being asked to do here is to just use symbols and numbers and expressions to represent what it's saying here for each store. So pause the video and write down the linear function by yourself. So your linear functions should look like y1 is equal to 6,000 plus 6,000 times 1 minus 25% times x minus 1. And the next one, y2 is equal to 6,000 times y minus 20% times x. So let's look at these two a bit closer. We know that the first computer is sold at its full price, so that's where the 6,000 comes in, because we know that each computer's full price is $6,000. We add on the rest, the price for the rest of the computers, which is 75%, you know, it's being discounted by 25%, the same thing as 1 minus 25%, times 6,000 for each of the remaining computers. So times the number of computers in this case, which is x minus 1. Now for store B, 6,000, we know that each computer is sold with a 20% discount, so we could just do 6,000, which is the initial price, times the 20% discount, times the number of computers, which is x. Now that we have our two linear functions down, we need to transform it and substitute it into a linear equation and inequality. So these are the two functions. Now we're going to have some more questions. When would it be cheaper to go to store A? your answer should look like this. When y1 is less than y2, the cost of store A is less than the cost of store B. We can solve that x is greater than five. The number of computers is greater than five. So when the number of computers is greater than five, store A would be cheaper. When would it be cheaper to go to store B? Well, when y1 is greater than y2, x is less than five. So when the number of computers is less than five, store B is cheaper. And when would the cost of both stores be equal? Well, that's when y1 is equal to y2. Solved x is equal to 5. Now here, it's important to notice that when we have the inequalities in the equation x is greater than 5, x is less than 5, x is equal to 5, that point, the point where less than turns into greater than, that center point right there, 5, you don't really need to solve every single one of these questions. Once you can find the pattern, you can just write 
x something 5. So x greater than 5, x less than 5, x equal to 5. All you have to know is that that center point right there is 5, and x's relationship with 5 can change. So it can be greater than or less than or equal to. But that number that it's being compared to is always going to be 5. So I don't know if that exactly made sense or not, but what I'm trying to say is in both in all of these expressions, x is greater than 5, less than 5, and equal to 5, the same number is being used, and that is 5. So when the number of computers is equal to 5, both stores have the same cost. So here's our summary from these problems. The steps to solving word problems. First, we find the quantitative of relationships. We write down the functional relationships. And then what we do is we turn the functions into inequalities and linear equations. Then after solving the inequalities and the linear equations, we can find a valid solution set to answer the question. Now, this isn't that much different from you know, the other types of word problems we've solved so far. But what makes it so super complicated is that on the third step, when we have to turn functions into inequalities and linear equations. And also the part where you have to analyze the problem really carefully and think about the different scenarios that could happen. Remember, there's not always going to be one scenario. There could be multiple. So here's a quick exercise. Functions L1, which is y1 is equal to kx plus b, and L2, which is y2 is equal to x plus a, are graphed on the same coordinate plane as shown. Therefore, the solution to the inequality kx plus b is greater than x plus a would be blank. When solving this problem, we have to first realize that there's an algebraic side to it and a geometric side to it. Here, the easiest way we can solve this is to look at the graph and to first understand what this expression here with this inequality means geometrically. So kx plus b, that is L1. So this is L1, kx plus b. And x plus a is this line right here, it's L2. It's asking when the y value of L1 is greater than the y value of L2. And as you can see, it's everything in this area right here, because everything to the left of number three is when the y value, the y coordinate of L1 is greater than L2. And as we go down, it doesn't work that way because as we can see, L2 exceeds L1. So our answer for this would be B when X is less than three. Class summary. Applying linear functions and linear inequalities to word problems. We start with a word problem, and then that leads us to writing down the functions, the linear functions. And if we were going to handle this geometrically, we would graph the functions and then analyze the graphs. Then that'll lead us to our answer. But another way we can solve this is algebraically, where we write the functions and we turn it into inequalities and linear equations. After simplifying the inequalities and the linear equations, that leads us to our answer. So again, there's two different methods that you can solve word problems like this. Today, we focused a lot on the, this blue half right here, where we used inequalities and linear equations. But the graphs, that's kind of what the exercise was about, just kind of finding what, ex what the expression literally means in that graph, and then just analyzing that graph to find your answer. Okay, to recap, the two skills we focus on today is to use the relationship between linear functions, linear inequalities in one variable, and linear equations in one variable to solve word problems, and to solve problems swiftly and accurately by using algebra and geometry. If you learned something new from this video or feel like your skills improved or your understanding improved, please hit that like button and comment down below where you were having trouble previously and how this video helped you. And again, if you would like to help maybe a friend or a family member, be sure to share the link to share this to them as well. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and we'll see you next time.